The functional unit of kidney are nephrons and there are millions of these in each kidney. Let's recall some of the anatomy first. The interlobular artery gives rise to afferent arterioles that form a tuft of capillaries called glomerulus. It leaves glomerulus as efferent arterioles and form vesa recta, a network of capillaries that follow nephron tubule. And finally, the blood is drained from nephron via interlobular vein. Renal nephrons are important in urine formation. There are four steps of urine formation. These are filtration, reabsorption, secretion, and excretion. Remember, reabsorption refers to the movement of substances from nephron back into the blood. Secretion refers to the movement of substances from blood into the nephron lumen. The first step in urine formation is the filtration of large amounts of fluid through glomerular capillaries into Bowman's capsule. As the glomerular filtrate enters the renal tubule, it flows sequentially through successive parts of the tubule, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, the cortical collecting tubule, and finally the medullary collecting duct before it is excreted as urine. Along this course, some substances are selectively reabsorbed from tubules back into the blood, whereas others are secreted from the blood into the tubular lumen. Let's have a look on individual segments of the tubule. In proximal convoluted tubule, there is reabsorption of sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate ion, glucose, and amino acid. And 65% of all the water that has entered into the tubule is reabsorbed in proximal tubule. There is secretion of hydrogen ion and organic acids and bases, for example, bile salts, oxalate, urate, and catecholamines. So here is the proximal convoluted tubule. The yellow is tubular lumen where urine is being formed. Green is tubular cell and red is blood. In proximal tubule, there is a co-transport mechanism that transports a large fraction of sodium ion across luminal membrane with other nutrients such as glucose and amino acid that are reabsorbed by their own channels. There is a counter-transport mechanism that reabsorbs sodium while secreting hydrogen ion into the lumen. This sodium is reabsorbed in exchange for potassium via sodium-potassium ATPase pump on basal membrane. The secretion of hydrogen ion into tubular lumen is an important step in reabsorption of bicarbonate ion back to the blood. Remember, hydrogen and bicarbonate are important in maintaining acid-base balance of the body. Water and sodium are important in maintaining serum osmolarity and blood pressure. Hydrogen combines with bicarbonate to form carbonic acid which then dissociates by an enzyme carbonic anhydrase into water and carbon dioxide. The same reaction takes place inside the cell in reverse order. Carbon dioxide is a gas and it can passively diffuse across membranes. That is why you are more acidic when there is high carbon dioxide level because there is a shift for more hydrogen ions production and hence more acidity. Bicarbonate ion is reabsorbed into the blood to increase blood pH if it has to by a co-transport of sodium. So bicarbonate reabsorption in proximal tubule is sodium dependent. This step is very important in maintaining acid-base balance of the body, especially in high altitude sickness where there is respiratory acidosis because of high levels of carbon dioxide in blood. Higher chloride ion concentration in tubular lumen favors its reabsorption through specific chloride channels while secreting organic acids and bases as uh, bile salts, oxalates, urates, and catecholamines. In the descending limb of loop of Henle, there is reabsorption of water by passive diffusion because of medullary hypertonicity. It is also called concentrating segment of tubule and it is impermeable to sodium. In the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle, there is reabsorption of sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate ion along with calcium and magnesium ion. This portion is impermeable to water. 
and secretion of hydrogen ion takes place here. There is a sodium potassium ATPase pump on basal membrane which maintains low intracellular sodium concentration. Low intracellular sodium concentration provides a favorable gradient for reabsorption of sodium from tubular lumen by a sodium chloride potassium co-transporter. So inside the cell, higher potassium concentration causes its back leak that creates a positive charge in the lumen which forces cations such as calcium and magnesium to diffuse through paracellular route. Chloride reabsorption is by simple diffusion. On luminal surface, there is a sodium hydrogen counter transporter that secretes hydrogen in exchange for sodium ion. The distal convoluted tubule has same reabsorptive characteristics of uh, thick ascending limb of loop of Henle which means it is impermeable to water and urea while absorbing most of the electrolytes. It is referred to as the diluting segment of tubule. There is a sodium potassium ATPase pump on basal membrane that maintains low intracellular sodium concentration just like it was in thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Low intracellular sodium concentration allows this sodium chloride co-transporter on luminal surface to reabsorb sodium and chloride. Chloride then diffuses by its own channel. There is reabsorption of calcium and magnesium. And there is a sodium calcium counter transporter on basal membrane. This pump works only in the presence of uh, parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone is released in response to hypocalcemia. So this hormone maintains normal levels of calcium in blood by reabsorbing calcium in exchange for sodium ion. The cortical collecting tubule is permeable to water unlike the previous two segments of the tubule. There are two types of cells in collecting tubule the principal cells and intercalated cells. Intercalated cells are further divided into alpha and beta types. There is a sodium potassium ATPase pump on basal membrane that maintains low intracellular sodium concentration and high intracellular potassium concentration. This allows the movement of sodium and potassium along their concentration gradient on luminal membrane. The activity of this pump is controlled by aldosterone. Aldosterone is a hormone that is secreted by adrenal glands in response to low plasma volumes or higher plasma potassium concentrations. So aldosterone causes potassium secretion in hyperkalemia state while reabsorbing sodium to maintain blood volumes to normal levels. Alpha intercalated cells secrete hydrogen ion by hydrogen ATPase and hydrogen potassium ATPase transporter. Hydrogen here is generated by the action of carbonic anhydrase enzyme on carbon dioxide and water to form carbonic acid, which then dissociates into hydrogen and bicarbonate ion. So these cells are especially important in eliminating hydrogen while reabsorbing bicarbonate uh, in acidosis. Bicarbonate reabsorption here is not sodium dependent. Chloride ion moves along the concentration gradient and potassium ion is reabsorbed by its own channel. The beta intercalated cells have hydrogen and bicarbonate transporters on opposite sides of cell membrane compared to alpha type. Therefore, they reabsorb hydrogen and secrete bicarbonate ion in alkalosis. In medullary collecting duct, there is final reabsorption of water and urea according to the requirements of the body. The epithelial cells of medullary collecting duct have specialized channels called aquaporins that reabsorbs water. 
Water permeability here is controlled by a hormone ADH, antidiuretic hormone, also called vasopressin. ADH binds to receptor on aquaporin, causing increased water permeability. ADH is secreted for, from posterior pituitary gland in response to low plasma volume or higher plasma osmolarity. Hence, it plays an important role in maintaining blood pressure. After all the reabsorption and secretion, the urine that is going to be excreted contains 95% of water, some urea, creatinine, and a lot of other electrolytes in smaller amounts.